Contamination in retail premises include contamination from the customers, such as their shopping bags when bringing pets into the premises, from the staff by blowing into bags, licking fingers. Contamination from customers and staff could also come from them coughing, sneezing, spitting, handling, smoking, cuts and sores, clothing from their hair, blowing into bags to open them, licking their fingers to separate pieces of paper before they wrap your food items. Physical hazards could be food safety hazards in as much they might cause damage such as broken teeth, cuts in mouth, choking or psychological damage. However, all physical contaminants must be controlled to comply with the legislation, even something that doesn't cause harm, like a hair or a piece of wood. Physical hazards can come in raw materials, such as pebbles, snails, stalks, leaves, wood, glass, insects and rodents, also bone cartilage and hide. The control factor here would be to use approved suppliers and use good specifications and keep sources of contamination out of food rooms. Packaging materials themselves could be the physical hazards, such as staples, cardboard, string, fibres, cloth, glass, rubber, plastic, wood and polythene. Also containers and returnable bottles, for example milk bottles. Control you would be take care when deboxing of a separate deboxing area away from the food preparation area. The use of detection systems such as metal detectors, magnets and x-rays and the care with waste disposal. Physical hazards could also come from the building structure, equipment, notice boards and cleaning activities and these could include such things as wood, nuts and bolts, plaster, paint flakes, grease or oil, glass, drawing pins, cloths and bristles. Control includes care with maintenance and cleaning activities, good design of food premises, the use of non-corroding materials, avoid temporary repairs, a glass policy, for example the use of diffusers over lights and no glass used in food areas. And lastly, care with the use and storage of cleaning chemicals. Physical hazards could also arise from staff, visitors, perhaps the public, and contractors, such as maintenance operatives, pest control contractors, cleaning contractors. Also sabotage from disgruntled ex-employees or present employees. Items could include jewellery, fingernails, buttons, combs, pen tops, sweet papers, cigarette ends and hair. Control here would be good personal hygiene and training. Physical hazards could also come from pests and pesticides, such as rodents, droppings, hair, bait, insects, eggs, larvae and nymphal moats. Control here would be use a good integrated pest management system which we'll cover in a later lecture. General detection methods for physical hazards include the use of sieves and filters, illuminated inspection belts, spotters, metal detectors, magnets, x-ray equipment, optical and colour sorters, air and liquid separators, and the training of maintenance operatives. The effectiveness of machines depends on the specification, the settings, maintenance, age and use, testing frequency and parameters, staff training and supervision. Metal detectors work by the food being passed through a magnetic field. Metal in the food distorts the field, there is an alarm and the food is rejected via compressed air. The rejected food is held in a secure container and retested, and the reason for the rejection is fully investigated. The effectiveness is checked by using Howley test packs. Limitations they don't check all metals, it's limited to ferrous and non ferrous, stainless steel, and aluminium foil. 
Another limitation is the size and position of contaminant. Chemical contamination of food. Contaminants could come from a variety of sources, such as pesticides used on the farm, or pesticides used in the food premises. Also from industrial chemicals, from environmental contamination, from freezer breakdown, from mercury, from fertilizers, for example nitrates, and from veterinary drugs. Chemical contamination would also occur from cleaning activities, such as CIP, which is cleaning in place, where they might use detergents, such as washing soda, or disinfectants, such as paracetic acid or sodium hydroxide. Also storage in food containers, spraying near food, storage with food, and also leaching from plasticizers or from products that's put into close proximity to food, such as plastic containers that might contain chemicals that could leach into the food itself.